O2 Arena, Jack Hermanson, sold out show. He's fighting. He's going to London. And he even said on Twitter shortly thereafter, there were three places he wanted to fight. MSG, check, O2, about to be checked. And then the last one is the Saitama Super Arena in Japan. Let us say hello to the action man, Chris Curtis. Kind enough to join us here to talk about his big win over, excuse me, big fight over Jack Hermanson, perhaps a win as well. Chris, how are you, my friend? I'm good, man. I'm good. And I will say, uh, it's, it was super funny to watch your twin fight and like, I was watching it like, man, this is so uncomfortable, <laughs> <laughs> but boy, did we look good? Huh? You see that striking You guys looked really good. Like thank the leg you. kicks are beautiful. You guys looked great. Congratulations I appreciate it. Th you. Thank you. It's very kind of you. I appreciate it. Wow. Okay. So this is a big spot, Chris, you have been in big spots, MSG, but there's more attention on you, a uh, higher profile fight. Tell me, when did you get the call? offer to fight Jack Hermanson to replace Darren Till. How did this all go down? Not, it was a uh, Wednesday. I was leaving conditioning and my manager pops up at the PI and he's like, uh, you should answer your phone first of all. And then he's like, uh, do you want to fight in two weeks? I'm like, yeah, sure. What's going on? And then he's like, do you want to fight in London in two weeks? I'm like, also, yes. What's happening? <laughs> and then he's like, well, I think we're fighting Jack Hermanson in two weeks. Uh, I said, yes. I asked how much you, I was like, well, what's in it for me? He's like, well, the pay bump. It's told my they're paying me. And I said, yes. And then an hour later, Hermanson confirms. And just like that, we're on the card. Damn. So you, you actually said yes before you even knew the location and the opponent. I was, I, my first question was when, and what are they paying? Okay. Is it a big pay bump? <laughs> it's, it's a substantial pay bump. Nice. This is great. Now, is it a new contract as well? Or just like a one-off pay bump? No, new contract and a substantial pay bump. So everyone always says Kevin Holland's crazy for like fighting so much, like short notice. No, I totally get why he does it, man. Like I can only imagine what Kevin Holland's pay is right now because like uh, my pay bump was substantial. So like, yeah, they, uh, they definitely take uh, take care of you for doing the short notice fights. It's so, this and the, yeah, it's crazy, man. Like last year around this time, you're getting ready to fight in uh, X MMA. Right. And then you, 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 you go like, and now here you are at the O2 a year later, co-main pay bump, longer deal. I'm sure you've had another deal before this deal against a vet. your story continues to be one of the best stories. Yeah. I, I love it, man. It's a, uh, it's crazy in this sport. How it's such a hard sport. It's very unforgiving, but your fortunes can change for the better or worse overnight, man. And like, it's for me, this last year has been pretty insane. I went from me at making 4,000 bucks a fight, maybe to uh, <laughs> significantly more fighting in O2 arena, a top 10 guy in the world. Like it's, it has been a hell of a year. <laughs> By the way, where are you living these days? I feel like the last time we spoke, weren't you living at your manager's house or something? Yeah, I was living with a uh, Lance, my manager. I got, I moved out. I got a place like not too far down the street. Like, nice. Yeah, Look at you. My own space. You have your own space. Still driving the same piece of shit car, though, and I'll drive until it explodes. But, uh, you know, I finally moved out like an adult and got my own space. But I'm just right down the street from it. How many miles on the car? Oh, uh, God, who knows at this point? It's it's, a, it's less than 100,000, but uh, okay, not it's too bad. still... It's definitely an old lady Sunday car before I got it. But, like, I'll drive until it explodes. You, you're, you're not like treating yours? No, no, it's like a 2006 Hyundai. Sonata, but, yeah. Is there anything you want to treat yourself? Like maybe it's not a car. It's, I don't know, clothes, uh, like the, gadget. I don't know, something. The biggest thing I bought was a, I bought a, I bought a new computer and that was like three grand. And that was the most money I've spent on like a single thing besides like the house. So like, yeah, uh, I'm fine. I've lived like a hobo for so long. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> like, I don't need fancy stuff, man. Uh, I just enjoy knowing I got money in the bank. I can take care of my son if he needs anything. So I don't really need anything special for me. I just want to uh, keep putting stuff away for when I'm done and keep fighting. That's it. So you said uh, on Twitter, MSG O2 Saitama. Why O2? Like, wh why why does that venue mean so much to you? For me, man, like you know, like coming from the boxing background, having such a huge fan of boxing. There's so many cool fights that have happened in the O2. It's just one of the coolest arenas in Europe, and it's like you know, it's one of those most famous arenas in Europe. Like it sees so much action. There's so many big fights there. You know, you got like Usk and Joshua and all that Usk and Joshua and all that stuff. And there's so many cool fights that have been there. So I think it'll really be fun to fight in such a big boxing arena. Like it's, it, 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 for me, it's one of those things. It's something I want to do. Uh, do you think you're going to be, 
my history. Yeah. Right, yeah, of course. No, I mean, look, in a year, you're crossing off, like, you're no apex fighter. You're crossing off two of the most iconic venues in sports in the world. It's unbelievable. Uh, do you think you'll be the fan favorite in this one? Because I feel like everyone loves you, and he, he, you're not fighting an Englishman, so I actually, but, but Jack is such a nice guy, too. I'm not sure how it's going to go. This is weird. I think Jack and I are the two nicest guys. Yes. <laughs> like, it's me, Jack, and Rodolfo are up there. Like, so it's funny, man. But uh, I've got a lot of uh, a lot of messages and and uh, support from the English fans, man. So they're super. Uh, yeah, I may not be an English fan, but they definitely uh, English English sports fans are crazy, man. Because like they're diehard for their team, but they respect uh, they respect the fight. They respect uh, people stepping up. So I've gotten like a thousand and so messages from English fans. Like, Oh, we're pulling for you. Me and all my mates are coming. We're going to be cheering for you. So I think they just respect somebody stepping up and taking the fight. So like, uh, I, I think I'll have a, a decent, some decent fans there. You got some, uh, some well wishes from Darren Till. Did that surprise you? No, nah, man, I've, uh, I've known Darren for a little bit. We trained together. Uh, actually he's going to be in the corner. <laughs> Is this happening? Yeah, it's, it's a thing. Yeah. Dude. So, uh, I think I'm going to have, my coach, Eric and Nate, then I'll have Darren Till and Brandon Lockney in my corner as well. Wait so a second. Two Englishmen in my this, well, and now you're for sure going to get cheered. Uh, wait a second. You, you throw this, you throw this out on Twitter. Like that, that was the first time you threw it out there. That was just kind of like a, a passing thing, right? Like, hey man, you want to corner me? Cause Sean can't go to England. So they want to corner me and Darren hit me up. He's like, yeah, man, let's go. So then I hit him and I hit Brendan up. And he's like, yeah, Brendan's like, I'll do it too. So there's my corner. <laughs> Damn. You've got one of the most uh, famous fighters from Liverpool, Manchester. That's it. Are you surprised that he's doing it? No, I'm, I'm, I've known Darren for a little bit. Uh, we, he's out in Vegas. We train together. He's a really cool dude. I like Darren. We get along great. And, you know, it's not the fans were, the English fans were definitely upset. He's not fighting there. And I know Darren's upset he's not fighting at home, man. Like, you know, people people give him shit, but like the dude trains really hard. Like maybe too hard. I I've done the same thing before. And uh, you know, injuries happen. So I know he was crushed about it and the fans were crushed. So I'm like, you know what, screw it. I I don't have a shot in my corner. I get a long break with Darren. He brings that same kind of energy. So why not we give the fans uh the fans took it to see Darren. He still gets to be out there in front of uh his hometown and I get my corner out of it. So, you know, everybody wins. Incredible. Now what is his role gonna be? Uh, he, he used to, he used to be Sean. Just tell me, don't be a bitch. Like okay. that's what, uh, Darren has much the same energy as Sean is like, I'm sure he'll scream something in like Scouser that I won't understand, but I'll, under, I, I'll get that. It means like, Hey, be like work harder. Or, like stop being a bitch. And, uh, yeah, that's each, he just used to be Sean for the fight. Uh, by the way, why can't Sean come to the, uh, come to England? Cause Sean quote unquote lost his passport as he uh, claims. Okay. Yeah, I, no other reasons, yeah. right? I, that we know of. I okay. don't know. I, if, I haven't checked any government watch list lately, but you never know. <laughs> you don't know, man. But uh, I think it's because of uh, passport issues. What happened against Pajeda with him? Uh, Sean is Sean, man. Like, uh, there was a clear game plan that was worked on in camp. We all went over. But at the end of the day, Sean is definitely a live by the sword, die by the sword kind of guy. And uh, even more so than getting a title shot, I think important to him was testing himself and see where he was. And a lot of people won't get that. But until you've been in there, some of the best in the world, you have people telling you you can't do something. Like they won't understand that like sometimes, you know, sometimes you're, we, we oh God. So I hate to make it sound like this, but you all say like, oh, put, you know, if I should financially, it should be, be you know, money before pride. But as a man in fighting, oftentimes you will see that your pride will come first mm -hmm. for better or worse. Like, you know, you can't fight without pride. You can't be a high level fighter without some sense of pride. And sometimes uh, to our detriment, we put that pride before everything else, but that's what he chose to do, man. He wanted to test himself. He wanted to see, and you know, it didn't work out in his favor this time. Something has most of the time this time it didn't, but, sometimes it's, you know, it's more important to know than to win. So I'll give them that, but you know, it's, it's, it's we're it's fighters are different, man. But like a lot of times it's more important to know than to win. Interesting. Uh, I, I mean, I understand the way you put it. Um, obviously you're watching and you're like, wait, why would he do that? What was the game plan by the way? Uh, so, so we worked on all camp. Sean's a good, Sean's a black belt in jiu-jitsu yeah. and Sean's a grappler and like his wrestling is very good. 
So we were like, connect, like stay connected to him. Like, don't train kickboxing range, stay connected to him, drag him down, wear him out, beat him up or submit him. I, honestly, I figured Sean would TKO. I figured he'd drag him down. He'd lock up with him. He'd clinch him. He'd drag him to the mat, let him get up, drag him to the mat, beat him up and wear him out and beat him that way, which is like the easiest path to victory. But Sean's like, you know what? Fuck your kickboxing. I'm going to kickbox you. So Sean goes and does Sean because that's, there's nothing else you can expect to Sean other than for him to be Sean. Uh, I mean, yeah, a good way to put it. By the way, what did you, since it's your weight class, what did you think of the main event? I stopped watching about like two and a half rounds in. I think I went and did something else. It was, I think I was like texting on Twitter, just like trolling with fans. Like I was, it was not a great main event. It's a, I don't know. It felt really dialed in, man. It felt really dialed in. I was like, way not to actually try to win that fight. Who who do you blame more for that? Do you blame Izzy or do you blame Jared or both? I don't, I don't I had this talk with somebody yesterday. Like, I don't understand what it is, but I guess I would love to, even if I'm going to fight Izzy, I would love to spar Izzy because I don't understand from the, from the outside looking in, nothing he does seems absolutely insane. He does some cool stuff, but like nothing seems absolutely insane. So I want to see like standing across from him, what, what's different? What is he doing? that's so threatening. You know, maybe it's just, there's, there's small stuff in there that you see as a fighter that makes you unsure, but I feel like he freezes guys. So it's kind of like, you know, it's Jared's fight for like getting frozen, but at the same time, like Izzy did nothing to end that fight. Like, you know, he did actually nothing to end that fight. So it's, I, I would love to see it. I just, I don't get it, man. But like, I would no, 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 no disrespect to Izzy at all, man. He's a champ. He's phenomenal. But I want to see like what's going on in there that makes people freeze. Do you think Alex has a chance against him? Uh, yeah, man. Alex knocked him out with 10 ounce gloves on. And now we've got four ounce gloves on. So oof. If I was Izzy, I'd be on the first flight to Dagestan right now, and I'd be wrestling for like the next year until this goes down. By the way, you beat Jack Hermanson, co-main event, big card. Like there, there's not that much between Jack. I mean, we're talking maybe one or two more. Do you agree with that? Like you're in the mix at that point. It's crazy. I've never once thought about that. I have never once thought about that. I'm like, holy shit. So I was like, oh, bro, you're like two fights away from title contention. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> <That's-> <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that's, uh, it's, I've never actually thought about that until like this week. And I'm like, that is actually a concerning thought because I never thought about being in this position. Never once. Wow. Like n- not even and, when you were coming up. No, never once. I never once thought about it. It was always such a struggle to even like get signed that you never, I never gave myself like time to think about title aspirations. Now they're like, if this goes well, you can be one or two away from a title shot. I'm like, holy shit. It, it, <laughs> like, it, it, <laughs> That's an amazing, like this, it's it's almost like you're playing with house's money at this point, right? I I feel like there's no pressure on you whatsoever. You didn't expect any of this. I I didn't expect it. And people are like, are you nervous? I'm like, look, man, if I go in and lose, I took a two week notice fight against the top 10 guy in the world. Like nobody wants to lose, but like, I don't think it really hurts me that much. Like I literally fought two weeks ago. I took a two week notice fight against a top 10 guy. Like, if you're going to hold that against me, cool. You know, like if I lose, shoot, let me run it back with a camp, but who knows? I think I can beat most people, uh, in the world, honestly. So I six, I win and I'm top, I'm number eight, great guy in the world. But holy shit. We never thought we were going to be here. I lose. It's like, cool. I'm still three and one in my UFC run. So they're with a brand new big contract. So, and then I thought about it too. If I do lose, I still have a new, a really good contract, a new contract. And now I can probably fight a guy coming off of a loss. Mm. So I'm like, oh, 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 so you know, win, lose, or draw, I come out, uh, I, I come out uh, above even. So I'm pretty happy with it. What is it about these short notice fights that you like? Like, it seems like you don't. Uh, I mean, now it's like back to back where you have fight, then you come back relatively um, shortly thereafter. Like, are you not letting yourself go? Do you go right back to the gym? You're just that kind of guy. Why do you like these spots? Uh, because I'm ready, man. Uh, the new saying is, uh, I was ready yesterday. Like I, after, uh, after that fight, I was back in the gym on Monday. I wow. wanted to train Sunday and I overslept and I was just, I was too tired, overslept. 
But I was back in the gym on Monday, and I was back to regular practice that Monday. So one of the uh, – Sam just picked up from one of my guys did a podcast with yesterday. is ready yesterday. And, like, that, that's, that's how I feel. It's like I don't let myself get out of shape. I don't let myself take too much time off. And I'm not a guy who goes and gains 30 pounds and takes a two-month break. I'm right back to it. So two weeks is great for me. Like, there's, there was nothing worse for me when I was supposed to fight uh, – Driscus or Drykus, whatever his name is. Driscus. Close. I, freaking, Close yeah, I, still don't, I still don't know his name. I still don't know Drickus. his name. Drickus. <laughs> Drickus. Like, I, everyone says it. Like, I've heard like three different pronunciations, and I'm just like, I feel bad every time I say it. When I was supposed to fight him, you know, I had what, three months to train? That fight falls through. And then I have what, another three months to train for, or two months, three months to train for Rodolfo. That's just too much time for me, man. I train really, really hard seven days a week. So training for five months is it's, it burns me out. I hate it. I lose interest. If I can, you know, just do my regular thing, fight. And then like, Hey, you want to fight two weeks, three weeks? Like, yeah, man, I'm in shape. Just let me go. By the way, what's up with this guy, Joaquin Buckley? Uh, he's just, he's just a snake. He has a snake and a clout chaser. That's all it is, man. Like, he got mad at me. Apparently he's mad at me because I helped Albert train for that fight. He's like, you helped him train against me. I'm like, first of all, you idiot. He's part of my gym and I'm fighting a top grappler. So like, why would I not train with Albert? Like if you guys want to go and fight each other, it's cool. You guys can kill each other. I don't give a fuck. But like, I had a fight coming up. He's like, well, you helped him get ready for me. So I'm bad at you. I'm like, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. And, um, I think it's a combination of Joaquin Buckley's just an idiot and like Joaquin Buckley does a lot of shit just to like chase clout and stay relevant. Uh, you know, like he's just that guy. Like I, I don't need to like weird call outs or to be like, Oh, well I want people to talk about me. So I'm going to go get the Detroit urban survival guy to corner me. Like, no, I don't, I don't have to go clout chase to like, you know, have people talk about me. And it's just how he, how he keeps himself relevant. So like, you know, Good to him, but die nameless, I don't care. And and you've trained together, right? He came out here, he had a fight coming up. I fucking was tried to I, we oh we welcome to the gym with open arms, man. Like I tried to do anything I could to help him out. Oh, I thought I was a good training partner. I thought we were cool. And then he's like, Oh, you helped somebody get ready for me. I'm like, he trains at this gym. And I needed him for my fight as well. Like, grow up. Is that who you were referring to? You you posted something on your Instagram about like the higher up the ladder you go, the more cloud chasers and things like that come come your way. Yeah, he's, he's definitely just random cloud. He's he does anything to have people talk about him. Like the Detroit urban survival thing. Like it's just he's Joaquin Buckley is a guy who not to be a dick, but he kind of shot himself in the foot. He had the best moment of his career with that kick. And from that point on, he's going to chase that, uh, chase that white dragon, but he's never going to catch it. So now he's just trying to one up himself. So, you know, it's like peaking in high school, man. Everything you do from this point is not going to be the same. And he's just chasing that high and he's never going to get it. So he'll do anything he can, to, uh, you know, try to make himself viral again. So good for him, but you know, keep my name out your fucking mouth and die. Name Woo, well, fast. Uh, or, or unless he becomes champion, then he will be topping it. Right. Uh, we'll, we'll, not gonna hold my breath on that. One. All right, fair enough. By the way, what's the uh, what's the background that you got there? Oh, I'm such a nerd. Uh, you see, Megalobox, Gearless Joe. Oh yeah, for I'm sure. Such a, yeah, it's a boxing anime, really good though. It's a boxing anime. Yeah. I don't even know. I didn't even know that existed. Anime about boxing. No, it's, it's a great one. There's Megalobox. There's Hajime no Ipo. No, go. I'll, I'll, Hit me up, man. There's this is actually a really good show, a very good story, like very, really? very, very, yeah. About the sport of boxing. Yes. yes. Well, this one's like a little bit more. It's like a, like it's boxing with a twist. But then you got like Hadre no Ipo, which is re super realistic boxing. Like, yeah. From Japan. Yeah. Damn. Dude, mm -hmm. just type it in. Mega, mega, mega low box. Check, I'll check, check it, it out. out. I'll it's check it out. I, I like that picture that you posted on uh, Twitter when the fight came out of Superman uh, <laughs> punching Joker. <laughs> I liked it. I like that. You, you got to have fun with it. And, uh, you know, we've got very, we've got, we've got very uh, basic strategies. He's going to try to take me down and beat me up. I'm going to try to punch a hole in his chest. So we've got very well-known strategies. When, when, when do you go out there? 
Uh, I think next Monday or Tuesday. Okay, just to get outcome. I mean, it's going to be during the day here, so it won't it won't be that big of a deal, right? Like it's not like. I'm not, I'm not. I can. So here's my one of my special powers. I can literally sleep anywhere at any time. Like it doesn't really matter to me. They're like, oh, the time difference. I'm like, bro, I could like be next to a garbage can at like three o'clock on the other side of the world. I can just go to sleep when I go to sleep. So I'm not worried about the time difference. It's always sucks more coming back. So I'll be fine there. It'll be like yeah, it'll be like midday here. Like yeah, it's fine. God bless, man. What a story. You continue to be one of the best <laughs> stories in the sport. It's a beautiful thing to watch. And now you're leveling up again. You're fighting in, I mean, O2. It's going to be a great scene. You deserve it. And uh, I can't wait for it. So congrats on on getting the fight on the new deal. Good luck to you, my friend. Can't wait for it. July 23rd in London. Thanks, Chris. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. On to the next one. Yes, sir. There he is. Chris Curtis, the action man, going up against Jack Hermanson. Tremendous card.